Good morning, Lifeway. Although our physical location is closed today, we're so glad you're joining us for Church at Home. We're so excited to be joining together as one family online. Our online moderators will help you get connected in the chat and make sure you feel welcomed. Here's how you can get engaged and get the most out of service. Comment with your name and where you're watching from as you log in for service. Take notes and listen intently to the message. It's definitely one you don't want to miss. Feel free to type your amens and such in the comments. Snap a picture of you, your family, or your pet watching the online experience and post it and use the hashtag LWC Church at Home. Once the worship music start, let's focus on God. Sing, clap, and praise God during our worship segment. We invite you to get yourself into a posture of worship. If you have a smart TV, use it to gather the family. Wherever you are as an individual or family, let's worship God together.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and blessings over us. Thank you that you are able to bring hope even through the toughest times, strengthening us for your purposes. Help us to set our eyes and hearts on you. Renew our spirits and fill us with your peace and joy. We love you, we need you, and we give you praise for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to Lifeway Church at Home. If we haven't had a chance to meet, my name is Steve Cianti and I'm the lead pastor here at Lifeway. And I'm Tina. We're so excited to have you with us today. If you're new with us, we would love to mail you a gift thanking you for joining us today. Just text LWC VIP to 94000. This will help us to get to know you a little bit and to get you better connected. We also want to let you know that next week, our Kids Church and Nursery will be open for our 11 a.m. service. Kids Church continues to be available on demand on our YouTube channel. You can find a link to it on our website, lifewaych.com. We'd also like to take this opportunity to thank you for your continued support during this challenging time. Thanks to your generosity, this Christmas, Lifeway was able to sponsor six New Britain and Hartford families with a total of 28 children through our Adopt a Family program. We partnered with a local magnet school to identify families with the greatest need. Because of your giving, all six families had Christmas gifts delivered for each one of their children. If you want to make a difference through giving, it's easy. Just text LWC Give to 94000. It's simple and secure to set up a one-time or reoccurring gift. Or if you prefer to give by check, mail to Lifeway Church, 2172 Berlin Turnpike, Newington, Connecticut. We're so excited today to have Paul Abedo, my roommate from Bible College and one of my best friends in the whole world, sharing with you an encouragement from the Word of God. Open up your hearts and your Bibles as we join Paul from his home studio in New Jersey. Well, amen. Good morning, Lifeway Church. It is so good to be with you here this Sunday after Christmas to 
be asked to share a word of God by your pastor, Steve and Tina. I really appreciate it. It's a big privilege and a big honor. I'm just so happy to be here. You know, I've known your pastor and his wife before they were even married. So that makes me old <laughs> more than anything. No, but uh, I've been lucky enough to know them since we all went to Bible school together. And I knew Steve and Tina um, even before they, they, were, they were married and I watched them get married and have children and now the, kid, you know, the boys are just so big and, um, <laughs> and uh, so involved in the ministry and I just wanted to let you know that I really appreciate, appreciate you Steve, I really appreciate you Tina. Um, Lifeway, you have an amazing pastoral team with, the, um, with also Pastor Joel and his wife and I just see the love in everything that they do. Uh, you know, it's been a really rough time for all pastors and everybody, really. But let's pray for our pastors because this is something that we didn't uh, get trained for in Bible school. I could tell you that. Um, and, <laughs> and there's just so many different pressures. And, but God's been faithful. And your pastor and his wife are, are the people for the moment. They are the people for the moment for Lifeway Church, and it's going to, we we're going to go through this and come out even better on the other side. So, Steve and Tina, I love you guys, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. I'm so excited to share uh, with the congregation um, via online this morning, okay? Um, my, my name is Paul Abedo, by the way. Um, I've, uh, I also graduated uh, Zion Bible Institute, and I've been ministering in different places ever since. But uh, I'm here with you this morning, and let's get right into the Word. I'm going to say a quick prayer, and then if you can grab your Bible or your tablet or your phone uh, or whatever it is that you use to, to crack open the Word of God, we're going to get into it today uh, out of Jeremiah chapter 29. So you want to get ready for that. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this morning. God, I thank you for the Christmas season, Lord, that you came, God Himself came to become a child, for unto us a child was born, but a son was given. Lord, we thank you that you were 100% man, but also 100% God. And you came, and you died, and you resurrected on the third day to remove the punishment of our sin from us. All we need to do is to believe on you and receive. Thank you, God, for this incredible gift that we have at Christmas, better than any other gift that we could ever receive. Lord, I just pray that you would bless Lifeway Church, all of the members, God, everyone who's watching this morning, and even those that are not, God, that you would supernaturally protect them, let them walk in divine health, oh God. God, just touch them where they are today. We all need a touch of your Holy Spirit today, God. Lord, and as we look at this word, we're going to have fun and, and we're going to look at it in a, in, a, in a way where we can apply it to our lives today, God. I'm so excited uh, that these words that were written by the prophet Jeremiah so many years ago are so applicable to us today, God. Help me as the speaker today um, to overcome all of my obstacles, Lord, and clearly, um, clearly give a word that will help people today that would be according to your spirit. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hopefully you have a Bible. Uh, I will read the passages for you, um, but it's so much better when you read it. Uh, when you read it and hear it, it's like t double reinforcement, right? So as far as a title for today, I know Pastor Steve is working on a, uh, a series about prayer. And so I don't want to steal any of that thunder, and of course I never could, but I wanted to talk about prayer today too. I wanted to talk not only about prayer, but persistence. Something that's missing in the world today is persistence, in my opinion. People give up way too soon. When they feel the pressure, they give up. Any resistance, and it happens even in, in Christianity, because if we are doing something for God, that we know God would want us to do with our life. If we feel any resistance, sometimes we say, oh, it's the devil, or God doesn't want us to do this, or I'm under attack, I, mean, I give up, I retreat, I, let's go to plan B, let's go to plan C. But today I want to encourage you to hang in there and be persistent, be persistent, like the persistent widow, be persistent. 
There's nothing like persistence, especially in prayer. And it takes faith as well. So the, the title is Patience in Prayer and Endurance in Suffering. And I got the title of today's message from a different scripture, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. Don't leave Jeremiah. We're going to get right to it. I'll read this to you. Listen to this. So that you will not be spiritually sluggish. So that you, this is Paul speaking, saying, so that you will not be spiritually sluggish. Think about that for a moment. Have you ever felt sluggish? I know after we ate all that fish on, on um, uh, Christmas Eve, the next morning I was feeling a little bit sluggish. <laughs> I didn't have the get up and go. And Paul is, that's in the natural, but Paul is saying in the spiritual, I don't want you to be spiritually sluggish. I want you to go, I want you to go full force into what God has for you in the spirit. I don't want you to be spiritually sluggish and so that you won't be, but will instead be imitators of those through who faith, listen, lean on God with absolute trust and confidence. We're supposed to learn from those people in the Bible and the people around us, the men and the women of faith in the church. That's why you're so important. Your example is so important to younger Christians because we're supposed to look at them and say, look how they've learned to lean on God in absolute trust and confidence. You know what faith is? Faith is the confident expectation of a positive outcome. I know where I am today. I know what 2020 was. I know that some of you are facing really big challenges as a result of everything that went on. Really big. No one's discounting that or, or diminishing that. But I also know that you serve a very big God. His resources are limitless. His uh, counsel is the best counsel. There's no question you can ask him that he won't be able to answer. There's no problem that you can come to him that he won't be able to provide for out of his limitless, limitless resources. And so we're supposed to look at those examples and do the same thing. We're supposed to lean on God. You know what? I think sometimes that, I think that sometimes we try to do it in our own strength. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it until I'm completely exhausted and I'm yelling at everyone and I'm, ah, I got to get this done. And God's saying, hey, look at some godly examples. Why don't you lean a little bit on me and I will take some of that burden. Give me the trust. Give me the confidence. And in his power, listen, and by patient endurance, I'm going to read it again, that way we don't get too, too confused. So that you will not be spiritually sluggish, but will instead be imitators of those who through faith lean on God with absolute trust and confidence in Him and His power. Maybe we don't lean on God because we don't really understand who He is and how powerful He is. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would illuminate that to you as you read the Word. And by patient endurance, sometimes we need to be patient. Sometimes we need to endure. Sometimes we need to pull ourselves up by our spiritual bootstraps and say, I know what the world is around me. I am not denying the situation. I am not denying the facts. I'm under attack, but I'm going to be patient. And while I'm being patient, I'm going to lean on the power of God and I'm going to endure it. I'm going to endure it. Why? Because the word says he will never give us more than we are able to endure. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And when I put my trust in Jesus, he will never fail me. He will never let me down. And by in comp trust and confidence in his power and by patient endurance, even while suffering, are now inheriting the promise. Even while I'm suffering, even when, when I am at dis-ease, even when I am uncomfortable, even when Things around me don't, that are affecting me don't seem to line up with, with what I know God wants. I'm going to patiently endure even while I am suffering because I am also at the same time inheriting the promise. The promise of help, the promise of salvation, and the promise of heaven. Patient endurance. If I could say one thing to you as this is just the introduction and I know I only have 25 minutes, Steve. <laughs> One thing I could tell you is never give up. 
men and women of God, children of God, never give up. We get discouraged. Yes, we do. We get downtrodden. But then we start thinking about God and we start leaning on his limitless power, his limitless resources, his amazing counsel. We lean on him and we listen. And guess what? He takes care of his kids. Sometimes we accuse God of being a child abuser. Oh, I'm a child of God, but I just don't understand why this is happening. You know, no, 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 no. Just because you don't see it, you need patience and endurance and you will see the hand of God in your life. Don't give up. Things are about to change for your better. Well, under the circumstances, I'm doing pretty well. You know what? As children of God, we don't live under circumstances. We have the ability to live above the circumstance. God doesn't live under circumstances. He's the only circumstance, and that's who we serve. So let's get our vocabulary worked out a little bit better and lean. Follow the instructions of Paul here. Lean on the power and the faithfulness and the limitless love of God this morning. So patience in prayer, endurance in suffering. Let's go ahead and take a look at Jeremiah chapter 29. I'm just excited to be with you. Steve gave me the call and I said, <laughs> at first I said, I have no idea how I'm going to do that. And then I, and as we're talking, I said, I got to do it. Uh, there's no way around it. And I knew exactly what we were going to talk about as well. So here we go. J chapter 29 of Jeremiah, the fourth verse. I want you to know that Jeremiah is speaking to those who were taken by Nebuchadnezzar from Jerusalem and carried away to Babylon. Okay? He took all the people of the southern kingdom and only the poorest remained in Judah and Jerusalem. And Jeremiah was one of those who remained. So the, the King Nebuchadnezzar took all the people except for the very poorest and took them back to Babylon and only the poorest remain in the southern part of the kingdom, and Jeremiah was one of them. Verse 4, Thus saith the Lord, this is Jeremiah, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive. So he's talking to those people who were in Babylon, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. So the Lord said, I caused it. Number one, just put that in your hat for now. Verse 5, Build houses, what? Dwell in them, okay? Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and have sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters, that you might be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive. And pray to the Lord for it, for in its peace you will have peace. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets, those who ended up in Babylon with you, uh, your prophets and your diviners who are in the midst of you deceive you, nor listen to your dreams which you caused to be dreamed. Don't listen to the dreams that you caused to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name, and I have not sent them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place, the southern kingdom. For I know the thoughts, listen, I know the thoughts, the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me, and when you search for me with all of your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from any nation you might happen to be in, and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. Wow. Jeremiah gives a word to those people that were carried away into Babylon. In verses 5 through 6, he said, Make the best of where you are. Make the best of where you are. He said, Build houses. Well, I'm a captive. I'm going to build a house? Doesn't make sense, God. Live in those houses. Don't just build them, live in them. Make them useful. Plant gardens. Eat the fruit, take wives, have children. Let those children get married and have children. 
daughters and husbands, that you may be increased and not diminished. He's saying, look, make the best of where you are. What was happening was the people in Babylon were thinking about the people that were left behind in the southern kingdom, and they were starting to get jealous. They said, well, we got carried away in, in, into captivity, but they got to stay. What, what's, what's the deal? And Like, come on, God, let's, what, what's happening? They were starting to say, well, God must be judging us, or God must love them more. He let us get taken away. He said right here through the prophet Jeremiah that I caused you to dwell in. He said, not Nebuchadnezzar, I had you driven out of that land. God must love them more. God must have forgot me. This is what the exiles started to believe. They're in Babylon. There's no relief in sight. They're thinking about their homeland. They're thinking about their houses. They're thinking about, they're thinking about the people that ended up staying. They say, oh, God must have forgot me. You know, and all these years later, we look at them, we judge them and say, what are they talking about? God, God has a plan for them. Yeah, but we do the same exact thing. We compare ourselves to other people. And then we say, well, God must love them more. Or maybe just God forgot about me. Or God is not fair. Or how about this one? Maybe I can't trust God to do what's best for me since he plays favorites. Maybe I'll take matters into my own hands and make things happen. And that's what their prophets started to do. Prophets in, in Babylon started prophesying that we're going to have a speedy deliverance and go back to Israel. And God says, hey, hey, hold on. Don't let them deceive you. This is what's going to happen. Make the best of where you are. God will prosper you. God can make you prosper even in a hostile environment. God can make a flower bloom in the desert. Look, I don't know what you're going through today, but no matter how difficult it seems, maybe it's a job that your boss is unfair, or maybe it's a relationship situation, or maybe it's a financial situation, do what you need to do in this situation. Don't be diminished, be increased. Work to uh, build houses and plant vineyards and make the best of where you are. If, you're in a, if, if you, are in a, uh, you want a house and you're in a $500 a month apartment, believe God for the house. Believe, lean on Him. If you're in a job that doesn't pay you enough, make the best of where you are and, and, and God will take you to the next level in that job. If you have a car that can barely make it to church, and I've had plenty of those because it's falling apart, make the best of that car now. Clean it, wash it, make sure the windows are clean, and, and, and make the best of that $500 car. And when you break down, you'll be the best looking broken down car. But all the while, believe God for, for something better. And yes, God is interested in the details of your life. Instead of complaining, instead of withdrawing and being diminished, Go for the increase, no matter what you're facing today. Man, I can feel that in my spirit. Faith does not deny fact. Yes, my car's a piece of junk, <laughs> but I am gonna treat it as if it's my next car, because I don't deny the fact that it's a piece of junk, but I don't let that fact stop me from believing and leaning on God, leaning on His power, leaning on His limitless resources. Hmm. I want God to make things happen in my life, not me. Let's go to verse 7 real quick. I'm going to reread it for you. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive. Now, he's requiring something of you. Seek the peace and pray to the Lord for it. Pray, listen to this, counterintuitive, right? Pray for your captives. Pray for the city in which you were led away captive. Why? For in its peace, you will have peace. In its peace, you will have peace. This is the patience part of endurance. Now, when things don't go our way, we could just sit in a corner and go like this. You know what? I am a captive here, and this whole place could burn down. I don't care. I am going to work slow. I am going to be obstinate. I am not going to participate. I am going to withdraw, and I'm going to work against this. I don't want peace in this city. I want, I want uh, chaos in this city, because once that happens, I'll go right back to Israel. God says, absolutely not. He says, seek 
the well-being, actively promote a state of peace, a state of being comfortable, healthy, and happy. And pray for your captives. Pray for the city where you're captive. Now, maybe you're, you're stuck in a job you absolutely hate. God's telling you patience and endurance. Pray for that job. Pray for that boss. Pray for that company. S actively seek out ways to promote peace, a state of well-being, happy and comfortable. Maybe you're in a relationship that's not going well and you feel trapped. Make the best of where you are and be a blessing wherever you are. Even in that relationship, pray, actively promote peace, seek God and do everything you can do to be a blessing. No matter where you are, no matter where 2021 finds us, we have to seek actively to be a blessing in that place for us and for all the people around me. Just because things are not going as you had dreamed, don't take it out on the people around you. We just read, for in its peace, you will have peace. Do you wanna know the number one thing people want in this world? It's called peace. Peace of mind, peace of spirit, peace of heart, peace. Peace in their family, peace in their job, peace with their kids, peace. That's the number one thing and they'll do anything to find peace. They'll do yoga, they'll do meditation, they'll get a massage, they'll, you know, and if, I, if I could just make more money, I'd have peace. If I just had a better house, if I just had better things, if I had better friends, if I had better spouse, if I had better children, I would just have peace. Listen to this, if I could just eliminate all conflict, I would have peace. Good luck. We all have conflict. If you're not experiencing a conflict right now, hold on, one's coming. <laughs> How do we find peace? According to the scripture, we actively promote it in others. Well, if things were different, I'd be able to do that. I'd be able to, I'd be able to be a blessing. I'd be able to help that brother. I'd be able to help that sister. If things were in my own life were better. That's not what God says. He's talking to people who are taken away in captivity. He's saying, while you're in that captivity, promote peace. And in the peace of those around you, you will find peace peace. That's why people don't have peace, no matter how much they try, because they don't seek it, they don't promote it in the people around them. Be a blessing. Church, be a blessing. While you're waiting for your life to get together, there's opportunities to distribute peace passing by you and opportunities for you to receive that peace. Today, if you have a troubled mind, if you have a troubled spirit, if you have a troubled home, today I want to let you know today, actively promote peace in everyone around you. Be a blessing to those people that are even not nice to you, and you will find peace that surpasses all intellectual understanding. Peace that exists in the midst of the storm. <laughs> the Prince of Peace, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. Amen. Just to tie it into Christmas for you. So make the most of where you are. Make the best of where you are. Don't run away. Seek out ways to be a blessing, even in a captivity. And number three, trust God's timing. I'm going to read verse eight again for you, if I can see it. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you nor listen to your dreams, which you cause to be dreams, for they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. The perfect timing of God will happen as he determines it, not as you determine it. You can prophesy it, you can dream it, but if it's not God's timing, it won't happen. Don't be deceived. And God is very clear. He says, for thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place because he's got a plan for you in verse 11. And he knows his thoughts and he knows his plans for you. So there is a dream that you can dream or you can submit to the dream that God has for your life. We all dream about how we want our life to be. And as we're dreaming, life is happening without us. It happens a lot in relationships. 
we're dreaming of that perfect spouse. When we're single, we're dreaming of that perfect spouse. And we have this image of a perfect person. And meanwhile, all these people are walking by and life is happening. And all of a sudden, it's one year. You haven't found that perfect person. Two years, you haven't found that perfect person. Three years, every, all your friends got married. All your friends got married. You've been to more weddings than you know what to do. I'm just an example. It's a very, pot, very uh, common example. While you're dreaming of what your life could be, your life is passing by right in front of you. It's much better to get hooked up to God's dream for your life and say, Lord, I submit my idea of ideals to what you have in store for me because I trust you and because I lean on you because I believe in you with absolute confidence. <laughs> you know, in life, when we come across a rough situation or a situation that doesn't match up to our dream, we have two options. The people in Babylon had two options as well. <laughs> they thought they, their, their prophets and their dreams told them, we're going to be out of here in 24 hours. God's going to do something. He's going to part a sea. He's going he's to uh, take us and move us uh, supernaturally. I, I don't even know what the prophecies looked like. Right? But God said, no, it's going to be 70 years. And when we hear something like that, when, when God's plan doesn't quite match up to our dream, we can do two things. We can respond in fear or we can respond in faith. How do you respond in fear? By trying to make it happen on your own. How many people's lives have been derailed by jumping ahead of God? We know, that we, we know God, we know the promises of God, and so we say, well, this must be God. Well, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Have you talked to God? Have you submitted to it? Are you leaning on Him, or are you running on your own power? And you want to know why I know about this so much? <laughs> because I've done it. I have that personality that wants to go. I know it, this is it, this is it. Yeah, not always. And that's why I have the wife that I have, because she's like, whoa, boy, pull back the reins. You know, let's take a break. Let's, uh, let's, let's pray. Let's read. Let's see. Let's let it, you know. And I've learned a lot from my wife in that way. And I've, 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 I've slowed down just a little bit, just enough to stay married. <laughs> but no, to get ahead of God, it's not that your intentions are wrong. It's just that you are intentionally wrong. Because we know that fear causes us to react. It's a reactionary. And faith causes us to lean. Faith is a quiet assurance that God is going to perfectly perform every promise that He has made. Faith is not us making every promise of God a reality. It's not us performing the promises. It's not us getting out in front of God and starting to doing things on our own, following our own dreams. This is not faith. This is fear. We are afraid that God is not who He says He is, and we're missing out on something good. Someone else has something that we don't have, and we have to have that. And God's saying, hold on, have faith in me. I have something that's designed specifically for you. Be assured, you may not like God's timing, but in the end, God will always exceed your expectations. Can I say that again? Please be assured you might not like God's timing, but in the end, God will always exceed your expectations. El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. He's the God of abundance. He blesses, and when He does, and when it's His plan, and when it's His dream for your life, there's excess, there's leftover. What's that leftover for? To bless those people around you. Amen? Somebody say amen in a virtual way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting used to speaking to a camera. It's crazy. So make the best of where you are. Be a blessing where you are and trust God's timing. In conclusion, I want to read, uh, I believe this is the Amplified Version of chapter 29, verse 11. And I want to encourage you with these words. It says, He will give them to see the expectation. That end which they desire and hope for and have been longing and long waiting for. He will give them not the expectation, listen, of their fear, nor the expectation of their fancies, but the expectation of their faith. 
the end which he has promised and will and which will turn for the best to them he's not going to give you your dream but he's going to give you an outcome that is going to exceed what you even can expect or what you can even dream he doesn't give you expectations of fear he doesn't give you expectation of fancy, which just means he doesn't give you, oh, you know, so many of us just, we want everything we see, like, very uh, casually. No, he's not going to do that because he has a specific plan for you. Insert name here. So if I were to do that, he's got a very specific plan for Paul Lebedo. He's got a very specific plan for you, your name, watching here today. Very specific. And he will give you the expectation of your faith. And that's, that's heavy duty. What are you expecting in faith? Are you expecting failure? Are you expecting disaster? You have to get your expector correct. <laughs> you have to get your ex expector correct. When we finally get back to church, we have to come with, a, with a, a spirit of expectation for what God is going to do when we get together. When we, when we go to the mailbox even, we have to be expecting something good to happen. You know, an evangelist, of old used to always say something good is about to happen for you and you know what that my friend is God's will for us for us to always be leaning on him and not expecting the worst but expecting the best he doesn't give us our fears he doesn't give us our self-imposed dreams but he does give us what we expect in faith and in the end he will turn the situation for the best to them Man, church, life way today, God works all things together for the good of those that love him. Even everything that happened in 2020. Something good is going to happen for you today. Amen? I want to pray for everyone. I hope that that touched you, that you were encouraged by that today. That's from, that's from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. And it's Jeremiah encouraging through, through the word of the Lord. It's actually God encouraging the people that were carried away to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar. Um, God encouraging through the prophet Isaiah to, I mean, Isaiah, Jeremiah, excuse me. Isaiah was uh, a sermon I preached on Christmas Eve. Sorry about that. Jeremiah, he's telling them, guys, don't believe your own dreams. Just rest in what God has. You can be a blessing and you can prosper even in a rough place. So I want to pray for you. And then if there's anyone there today that's, you know, you can, um, that, that needs Jesus. Man, you got a lot of presents this year, a lot of fancy bows and wraps, and you just ripped it apart and looked at what's inside. Today there's a present that God has for you. And John, and the, uh, the Apostle John says that he removed our sin from us. And if we would believe and receive Jesus... He will give us the gift. The gift is the power to become the children of God. Let me ask you a question. Who's more important in your life, a friend or your own children? That's a, if you're a mother or a father, it's an easy answer. It's my children. If you have two emergencies, one friend, one children, child, who are you going to go to? Children. In fact, a mother or a father, when, even, if, even if the room is filled with children, I can hear out of all those kids if my kid is crying because my ear is tuned to their cry. God wants to make you his child, his son, his daughter, and he's a good father. Maybe you had a bad earthly father and you, you don't need any more fathers. No, no, God is the good father, the best father you'll ever have. Would you receive it? There's no conditions to receiving this gift. People gave you gifts just yesterday, uh, just on Christmas Day, and you didn't say, well, you know what, I would take it, but I have some things I need to take care of in my life. No, no, you didn't. You said, give me that present. Oh, look at that, socks. I need socks, my feet are cold. You know, you, you just received it, and that's what God wants to do for you today. He just wants you to believe Him and receive the gift, and you will be a child of God today. So I wanna pray for you as well. And if 
any of this makes uh, uh, resonates with you at all, just you know, leave some comments in the comment card. Reach out online to one of our online greeters. They want to pray with you. They want to be with you. We want to hear from you because we want to help you in the journey. Lifeway is a church of evangelism and, and, and embracing. We don't wait for you to get cleaned up. We want you to come, come to church and be with us. Let's get together with God. Let's see what His design and His plan and His dream. So please don't let anything stop you from reaching out today online or make a call, whatever you need to do. We want to, be, we want to partner with you to, in, your, in your new relationship with, with God. And if you're going through a rough patch, I know Pastor Steve will, will pray for you and Tina and, and Pastor Joel and his wife. I know they will. And they're men and women of God that get answers. And if that's what you need, you need to reach out for them. But let's pray right now. Lord, I thank you. I can feel the Holy Spirit, God, helping me at the moment, God. And I just pray that wherever anyone is watching or listening to this tonight, God, that they would they would be so encouraged. Maybe there's someone that's just about to give up. And I, I had this opportunity to say, don't give up. Trust God's plan. Don't give up. Lean on God. Don't give up. Don't give up. Just a little bit more. God says, I'm going to make you prosper even in a rough place. Even in a, where I'm going to give you peace even when the world is rocking and rolling around you. You're going to have a song in your heart because you're going to lean on me. You're going to trust in me. You're going you're gonna to have access to my limitless counsel. You're going to have access to my limitless resources. You're going you're gonna to be affected, yes, but you're not going down. You're going up. You're not going to be diminished. You're going to increase in, in even in a hard place and then you will see my plan and then you will get the expectation of your faith. Brother and sister, don't give up today. And for those of you who need to receive Jesus, just simply say this, there is no prerequisite. His limitless love is available to you and he is faithful. He will never fail you. He will never leave you. He will never desert you. If a thousand people desert you, Jesus will never desert you. All you need to do is say, Jesus, I receive you as my savior. I believe in you, God. I understand that you set your sacrifice covered my, all of my sin and I want the power to become a son or a daughter. I want that relationship with you. And that's it. Welcome to the family of God. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. If you prayed that prayer, reach out online. Amen. If, if you've prayed that prayer, reach out online. This is the greatest decision you can ever make is to serve God and to be his son and his, or his daughter. God will help you. He'll reach out to you. If you reach out to him, he will draw an eye onto you. He will reach out to you as well. Hey guys, I am so thankful for this opportunity. I hope that I encouraged you through the word of God today. I'll be praying for you. And as this video gets distributed, I pray that many people will be um, instructed and also encouraged to not give up. Amen. God bless you, Lifeway. Have a great day. Paul, thank you so much for that encouraging message. If you prayed that prayer with Paul, if you received the gift of Jesus in your life today, whether it was for the first time or a rededication, we want to give you a free copy of the book called Now What? This book was written by Pastor Joel and myself to help you take your next steps in your faith journey. If you'd like a free copy, simply text LWC VIP to 94000. Fill out the info and check the box that says, I'm committing my life to Christ. Please send me a Now What book. As 2021 begins, we want to lead the way to a powerful start to the new year with 21 days of prayer and fasting. We will begin on Thursday, January 7th and end on Wednesday, January 27th with our sacred assembly service, 7 p.m. at Lifeway Church. For more information on 21 days of prayer and fasting, head on out to lifewaych.com forward slash events. We plan to reopen for in-person services next Sunday, January 3rd. So Tina and I can't wait to be back with you in person or online next Sunday for our 9.30 and 11 a.m. services. God bless.